So once you've got your local web server set up on your computer for your local server and you're ready to start getting into your web programming, the first thing you need to do is you need to understand how to work with MySQL databases. Now MySQL databases are some of the most common types of databases used with PHP applications and PHP websites. So in this video I'm going to actually show you how to create new MySQL databases using PHP MyAdmin. The first thing you want to do is you want to start with actually logging into PHP MyAdmin. Now you can do this using your default username and password of root being your username and a blank password or if you've already set up a custom username and password or changed your password for your root account, be sure to use that. Now from the PHP MyAdmin homepage, uh, it's super easy to actually create a new database. You've got two different options. You can actually click on the new button on the left hand side underneath the PHP MyAdmin where it shows you a list of every single database you have currently on your server. The other option is if you click on the databases tab at the top you can also create a new database going to this page. Either way, it'll take you to the same location, same page, where you can actually create a new database. Now for this MySQL course, I'm going to create a new database called uh, course underscore MySQL. And then in the next box, you can actually select what type of database that your database is actually going to be created. Now this actually is just the formatting and the general character set for your database itself. I would usually just recommend going with the default, whatever it's already set to for your server. Then when you're ready to create your new database, just click the create button. Pretty straightforward. You get a little pop-up notification that you saw there that says your new database has been created. And then PHP MyAdmin should automatically redirect you to your new database. And then you'll see at the top we're currently selected to our new database called course underscore MySQL. Alternatively, if PHP MyAdmin does not automatically redirect you to your newly created database or later on when you're trying to get to your database, you can actually super easily get to it just by clicking on the database name in the left hand column. Now once you're inside of your database and you're actually selected to that database or whichever one you want, you can actually easily create new database tables right from this page. So to create a new table, I'll just create a basic one called users, like you would create in some sort of a uh, user application or member system application. And you can select the different number of columns that you want for your database. Now, I already have four typed in here, so I'll just hit the go button. And this will actually begin us with the process of creating our new database table. So inside of the name, you're required to fill in a name for a unique name for every single database or every single table column for your database. Now later on when you actually get into your PHP code that you're going to use to actually select information and insert data into your database, you're going to need to use each of these unique identifiers, the unique column names, in order to send and retrieve information from your MySQL database and each of the respective tables. So I'll just go ahead and fill in a couple of pretty standard username or user database table information for a very simple web application. Usually you'll have an ID, that's a unique identifier that's associated with every single record and that'll usually have an integer type or maybe a big integer, big int. And then typically you'll also have an auto increment set. So you go ahead and check that box and you'll notice that our index has been set to a primary. Now this is super important for any unique identifiers that you're going to use in any web application. Basically, you want to make sure that every time a new record is inserted into the database, that that unique identifier is truly going to be unique. Every time you add a new record, it's going to auto increment up. That's that A underscore I, auto increment. And setting that as a primary key, just make sure application is just a little bit faster in indexing your database like that. Now the next name, I'm just going to type in as user. So that'll be the username I'll select it to a varchar or variable character. So basically that can just be a difference, a different collection of characters and letters and numbers and symbols, all that kind of stuff. Now when you set a varchar as a type in PHP MyAdmin and MySQL, you're required to set a length. So typically for usernames, I'll just use a 50 character length for each of those. And then in the PHP code in the application later, I'll limit that to however much I want. Another very common column name in a user database table is your password. Obviously you want to be able to log into your secure account using a unique password that every user will be able to have. 
So I'll just set that to a length of 100. Now, when you're inserting and saving passwords into your database, you want to make sure that you're using some amount of security and using password encryption and hash encryption. And I'll have a video on that later in the series. But basically, it'll take a single string of whatever the user enters as their password, and then we'll throw it into a hash function built into PHP, and it'll give us kind of a gobbledygook combination of letters and numbers, and that's the password hash, and that'll be saved in the database by the plain text password that the user typed in. And again, with a varchar, we're required to set a length. Typically for passwords, I set to 100 characters, but usually uh, MD5 hash or something like that, something like 32 characters, something like that. So 100 characters should be perfectly good. Now the last column that I'm going to create is just a date column. So typically when I create a user table, I usually put in a date column, which I can use to record when the user's account was created. And I'll be using the PHP time function to give a numeric value for the specific time all the way down to the second that the user account was created. So I'll just leave that as an integer type. Now, once you're satisfied with every single name and type and auto increment that you've got set up for all the columns inside your database table, you can go ahead and just click the Save button. It'll process the request, and then, boom. It'll automatically redirect you to select to the table that you created, and then you're done. Your database and your database table have now been created, and then you're ready to work on inserting new data into your database table.